So a square can be considered a regular quadrilateral. So it's really a four-sided figure where all four sides are equal and all the internal angles are equal. And we know that the internal angles of a quadrilateral, uh, they all add up to 360. So each of these angles is 90 degrees. So in a square, all four angles are 90 degrees equal and all four sides are equal. And for a rectangle, um, all four internal angles are also equal. But the, um, the two sides are different. Angles are equal. So in general, rectangle, the opposite sides are equal. Internal angles are all 90, 90. These two are equal and these opposite sides are equal. Another common type of a, a quadrilateral is what's called a parallelogram. And here the um, the opposite sides are parallel. So it looks something like that. So the opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are parallel. And if we let's say let's say we call this angle x and this angle is y. So because these two sides are parallel, I'm just going to draw it like this. And you can think of this as the line here, then this angle is equal to that. And we notice that x plus y is 180. And we also notice if we draw this line, which is parallel to that, that this angle is x, which means this angle is x. So in a parallelogram, the opposite internal angles are equal. And here, this is y, because these two are parallel. And if we extend that, this is y, and this is y. So opposite internal angles are equal. So th that's a common, those are some common properties of parallelograms. Uh, next, on triangles, so there's a relationship between the length of the sides of a triangle and the angles that, that are opposite uh, those sides. So for example, for this triangle ABC, uh, the longest side, which is AC, longest side, is opposite the largest angle. And the reason for that is if this opening is the greatest, then it opens out opposite the uh, the longest side. So this is a key rule you have to remember. The longest side is opposite the largest angle. So if you have, say, angle B is greater than angle C, this angle being greater than angle C, then um, AC, which is this side, is going to be greater than uh, AB. So that's, that's a general property for, for any triangle. So a question could be tested on this concept is, you're given this triangle, and with these types of problems, the figures are never drawn to scale, so don't assume anything unless you can compute and show. So this is 50, uh, this is C here, and quantity A here is a length of side AB and quantity B is length of side AC. And so I need to find this angle, so I know this is 100, sorry, this is 50, which means the remaining two angles have to add up to 130, because they all add up to um, 180. And I have to subtract 64 from this to find that angle. So um, this is going to be 66. So that angle is 66. So 66 is greater than 64, which means that that side AB is going to be greater than AC. So here, um, AB is greater than AC. And let me just make sure 120. Yep. So AB, this is uh, greater than AC, which means the answer is is A. So that's, that's one way they could test this concept. The other has to do is with what's called a triangle inequality. Now again, you will not see this, this terminology or this expression, but I'm just using it to sort of uh, remind you of what, what it's about. So uh, what this is, um, is if you're given two sides of a triangle, so imagine one side is five 
and the other is uh, 8. And if you're given the lengths of the two sides, <clears throat> you know, what are the possible lengths of the third side of this triangle? You know, could it be anything? Could it be 15? Could it be 2? Could it be 0? So the way to think about this is imagine that these two sides are rods that are pinned here. So this part is fixed. And these rods can rotate anywhere. You can bring them closer, you can put them farther. So think in terms of, let's say, if this is it, the, the two rods are in this specific position, then that's the length of the third side. And I want to see what's the maximum I can make this. You know, what's, what's the greatest I can make this? And I say, how, do, how should I position these rods? So, so the approach would be, if I were to stretch these out, if I expand them out, then I know that this is going to become, um, th this third side is going to become longer. And if I flatten them out like this, well, then it's a straight line, but then this third side would be 13. Now, uh, because it has to be a triangle, it has to be a little bit tad bit up. So we know that in the extreme, that third side has to be less than the sum. So that, that's, that's one one extreme is that the third side of a triangle has to be less than the sum. So that's the maximum. And also to keep in mind here is that it can't be 13, but it could be 12.98. A lot of times students want to go to the next whole number. But when it comes to triangles, you know, they don't have to be whole numbers. The side could be 12.98 units. Now let's, let's look at the other extreme. Meaning, again, we're given 5 and 8. What's the shortest this could be? How should we place these two sides so that this side is as short as possible? And the key thing here is, again, they're pinned here. You bring them closer. The closer I bring them, the shorter the side becomes. So what you do is you say, okay, if I bring them really close, 5 and 8, this is going to get short. And then if I were to just kind of lay them on top of each other, this is 5, this is 8, this length would be 3. So it has to be greater than the difference. So that sort of is the summary here. So the, it has to be between 3 and 13, given um, the two sides, 8 and 5. So the, the, the rule, or what I mentioned, the triangle inequality is that the third side is less than the sum, sum of the lengths of the other two sides, some of the lengths of the other two sides. And I'm using absolute value here. I mean, here it doesn't matter, but it's, this is more for general. For this side, I'm doing it as a difference. That way, it doesn't really matter if you do 8 minus 3 or 3 minus 8. The absolute value or the difference is 5, and that's why I'm using that absolute value. And it has to be greater than the difference of the lengths of the two sides. So that's that's the triangle inequality. And it might be tested uh, in different ways, and I want to illustrate that with one example. Here you're given that in triangle ABC, length of AB is 10.8, and length of side AC is 4.6 and quantity A is length of side BC and quantity B is 6. So here AB, not drawing it to scale, AB is 10.8 and AC is 4.6. So I know AB has to be less than the sum which is 14.15.4, and it has to be greater than the difference, or 10.8 minus 4.6 to 6.2. And here, quantity B is, is 6, so we know side BC has to be greater than 6.2, meaning under all circumstances, quantity A, or length of side BC, is going to be greater than 6. So the answer here is is A. Quantity A is, is greater. So this is here, that, that was an example of the application of uh, the tr what's called a triangle inequality. 
Now on to uh, another type of triangle. These are isosceles triangles. And um, here two sides are equal. Two sides are equal. And the angles that are opposite, that are opposite these two sides, opposite are equal as well. So an example would be something like that. Here, this is 70, this is 70, this is 40, and we have AB, which is this length, is also equal to AC. So AB equal to AC. When you have an isosceles triangle, any isosceles triangle, when you drop a perpendicular from the this vertex or this corner, then here we have these two are equal because it's an isosceles triangle. Then these two are identical, meaning this is the midpoint, or halfway point. So this is true for any any isosceles triangle, and that's a property that also comes up. Now another I I interesting type of idea that's tested is is uh, I'll just present it. So you're given a triangle ABC, and you're given that angle B is seventy degrees, and the question is, what are the possible measures of angle C, if you had to list them all out. And this has to also do with um, how this is an open-ended problem, meaning they only give you one angle. They don't say which two sides are equal, which two angles are, are equal. So you have to sort of draw out all the possible angles. So uh, if this is B, A, B, C, then we know, sorry, this is 70 degrees. This is 70. So angle C is the remaining angle. Remember, this this labeling is completely arbitrary. So those add up to 140. Remaining angle is 40. So angle C could be 40 degrees. Now here, this labeling, I could move this to here, C, make that A. So angle C could also be 70. And then uh, the the third case, which I think a lot of students uh, miss, is the is if the angle that's not equal to the other angle is is the third angle, meaning if this is seventy. And then here, these two remaining angles have to add up to one hundred ten because that's seventy. And then we make these two equal seventy. Actually, I need to call this C. That's fifty five. So angle C could also be 55. So these are three possible values. So that's something they, they love to, to test. Um, okay. So next is um, right triangles. Now right triangles are um, triangles where one of the angles is 90 degrees. So a general right triangle would look like this. One of the angles is 90. The side that's opposite the 90 degrees is called the hypotenuse. And it's also the longest side. And the reason is that it's opposite the largest angle. And the convention is to label them A, B, and C. It's arbitrary. And the relationship is called what's called the Pythagorean theorem says that the square of A plus square of B is equal to the square of C. So one way to sort of graphically visualize this is, so imagine if you have, let's say you have a right triangle. And in this case, it's uh, these two sides are equal. And um, what I want you to think is, is if I draw a square that's identical to this square, and I draw another square here, This would be half, half, half. What you would find that in, for this triangle, the, so I'm going to chop these up. So area, this is the square that corresponds to that side. So two triangles, one, two, and here three and four. Right? So this is the square that corresponds to the second side. This is equal to the square that you would draw opposite the hypotenuse. And you can see this also has four triangles. So that's the physical meaning of when we say a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It means the area of the square that corresponds to the two sides 
of the shader triangle is equal to the area that corresponds to the hypotenuse. So that, that sort of was a quick illustration. Um, now there are some standard right triangles that you do need to know. Um, these are often used on the test and the most common one is what's called the three, four, five triangles. So here if the two sides are three and four, what's the hypotenuse? The way you would apply this is the Pythagorean theorem is three squared plus four squared is equal to c squared. That's nine, 16 is c squared. That's 25, c is five. So this is called the three, four, five triangle. And you will also need to know the multiples, what I call the multiples of the three, four, five triangle, meaning sides that are, for example, you double each of the numbers, six, eight, 10. And so in general, triangles of the form three, a, four, a, five, a are also right triangle. So if you are given, for example, so if you, let's say you have this right triangle, and this is 15, this is 25, and they say, what's the third side? And the, what you have to notice here, that this is three times five, this is five times five, so this has to be four times five, or equal to 20. So that's that's the use of those standard three, four, five triangles. Another one that shows up, I think the second most popular one, is you're given, this is five, this is 12, third side. And um, it's good to memorize these, but if, if you don't, then the only option you have is to actually compute this. 12 squares, 144. If you add these two, that's 169. And the question is square, what number is 169? That's 13. So this is the called uh, the 5, 12, 13 right triangle. And, and then there are some other um, less common ones, but they do show up on the exam. Um, one is the 8, 15, 17. So again, I would recommend you to kind of work these out and make sure that it is these are right triangles. Again, the reason the test writers like these is because they are all nice whole integers. 7, 24, 25. And um, one of the things is, is, and this is for, you can apply this for finding one of the sides if the if they give you the hypotenuse. So for example, if this is given 25, this is 24, and they gave you this as x. To compute this, you can write x squared plus 24 squared equal to 25 squared. And then you say x squared is 25 squared minus 24 squared. And this is the difference of square form. So it comes handy for these types of right triangle problems. And that's 1, and that's 49, which means x is 7. And then you might also get some unusual triangles that you may have never seen before. It's That's also part of the exam, so it might be like 61, 60. Some of these I haven't seen either. So, But if they give you something like that in the exam, they have to come out to be nice numbers because that, that's just the style of the exam. So x squared is 61 squared minus 60 squared, and we say this is 61 minus 60, 61 plus 60, that's 1, and that's 121, which means x is 11. So almost always, I think you should, it's guaranteed that, that the numbers you're given, they are going to be pretty nice. So the next example I want to go over is what, what are called right isosceles triangles. So, so far, we looked at right triangles, and right isosceles triangle, so it's a 90 degrees, one of the angles is 90, and it's an isosceles triangle. Because this is 90, the other two sides have to be equal, and they have to add up to 90, which means each angle is 45. So 45, 45, 90, these two are equal. So let's say if the sides were 1 and 1, what's the third side? We can apply the Pythagorean theorem. C squared is equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared. 1 plus 1 is 2. So C squared is 2, which means C is square root of 2. So if this is 1, this is 1, this is root 2, and... You can think in terms of, if you had to kind of approximate these dimensions, 1, 1, this is about 1.4. Kind of makes sense. Um, now, if the sides were x and x, which is the general property, then c squared would be x squared plus x squared, which is 2x squared, which means c is square root of 2x squared, which means it's square root of x squared times square root of 2. Square root of x squared is x. Here we're just dealing with positive quantities. 
So if it's x here, x here, this is x root 2. And the way this comes in handy is if you given a right isosceles triangle, this is 45, and they say this is 3, this is 3, then this is just 3 root 2. So you don't have to do the Pythagorean theorem every time. So a good way to remember the ratios is the angles are 45, 45, 90, and the sides are 1, 1, root 2, or x, 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 root 2. So either way, it's, it's handy to memorize these ratios. If you don't remember, then your backup plan is to use the uh, Pythagorean theorem. Okay. And next is what's called the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Again, another common one that shows up on the exam. And it's really what's called um, half of an equilateral triangle. So what's an equilateral triangle? An equilateral triangle is a triangle where all sides are equal. Equilateral triangle. So all sides are equal and all internal angles are equal. All angles are equal. And uh, here the sum of these internal angles is 180, which means these three angles are 60. And it's also an isosceles triangle. So when I drop a perpendicular here, that's 90 degrees and it cuts into half, and that angle is 30. So the half of that equilateral triangle is what's called 30, 90, 30, 60, 90 triangle. So here I'm going to arbitrarily call the side of each side of this equilateral triangle 2. And after this, I'm going to do it in a more general way, but let's just start with if the sides were each 2. Then this length is 1, because it would be half of that base. And then the question is, what is this length, which is the same as the height 2? So I'm going to call this. I can apply the Pythagorean theorem to this right triangle, h square plus 1 square, and this is the hypotenuse, is equal to 2 square, which means h square is equal to 4 minus 1 is 3, which means the height is root 3. So this is how these sides are in that ratio. So 30, 60, 90, um, 30, 60, 90, and the ratios are 1, root 3, and 2. And you can see root 3 is about 1.7. And um, it's and the, the, the lengths are directly proportional to the angle. So the, the higher the angle is, the, the longer that side is. So if you have x here, then the middle one would be x root 3 and 2x. So this is the ratio you need to know and be able to apply it when you have to compute uh, these sides given one of the sides. So.